Thank you for joining us again on our daily emergency briefing call. I think you will agree that watching the news and seeing images of our friends' houses destroyed and communities decimated is truly horrific. You will see in the slide on your screen of CNN visiting one of our bomb shelters in the South. This shelter was meant to be a place to protect lives, a place to safeguard the innocent, a sanctuary of last resort. However, as innocent men and women and children sought shelter, a Hamas terrorist threw a grenade into the shelter. I'm sorry, but I have no words to describe how this makes me feel and all of us feel. This is beyond the depths of evil. After the horrors our people faced in the previous century, no one thought Jews would ever have to run again. Yet this week marks the largest loss of Jewish life since the Holocaust. That is a very grim statistic. Many of us feel helpless. However, now more than ever, is the time for us and supporters of Israel everywhere to stand tall, remain resilient, and to do what it takes to help our ancestral homeland. As I speak to you, our Israel Resilience Campaign is in full swing. You can go online now and make a donation at jnf.org slash support Israel. Every dollar goes to emergency relief. It does not go into our general fund. We've been working very hard all day with, you know, news coming from all over the country and requests coming from all over the country and trying to catch up, you know, with our affiliates and friends and the frontier and the school and everyone. And we were trying in the last hour to gather all the information for you so that you can know exactly what's happening. Um, so five, ten minutes ago, we got a uh, notice that a uh, uh, missile uh, fell next to the Sderot uh, uh, playground. Uh, nobody, luckily, there's nobody there. Nobody was uh, injured and the fire is under control. And we're uh, uh, looking forward to, to, you know, to hearing some good news uh, uh, from that area. Um, next one, Miriam. Um, we were busy the whole day uh, receiving, as I said, um, requests from the regions uh, for e evacuations. It was tough because the regions are still, some of the people are still locked and some of them cannot transfer and the IDF did not open the roads. So it's not easy. Nevertheless, we were able to support the evacuation of 2,500 residents from a school region under the state of Israel for whatever the state of Israel decided there to evacuate them to. In addition, uh, we were able to support 350 people to move last night from Shlomit in Chalutza to Gush Etzion where they already had some activities for the kids uh, this uh, morning. 50 families were evacuated from Amioz in a Shkol region to Eilot region. Eilot region is in the Arava near Eilat, not far from Eilat. And another 200 families were evacuated from Ein Absor, it's in the Sh uh, Shuva. These are two Moshavim in a Shkol region to Timna Park. Tim Timna Park is again not far from Eilat. Um, next one, Miriam. Uh, we are supporting 200 Ukrainian Olim who are hysterical because they don't even speak the language uh, to, from Sderot to Jerusalem. They will be moving tomorrow morning. Another 200 people will move from Moshavi Vul uh, to Masada guest house. There's a guest house on Masada, so they will be evacuated over there. All in all, we have 2,000 ready for absorption of, uh, of more evacuees, including the two campuses that we have uh, of Mass High School in Beersheba and in Hoda Sharon. They're already with sheets and food and maintenance and everything just to absorb these uh, people. We're in touch with the entire region of the Negev, with the entire region of the North. They all know that we have this availability and they're approaching us as we speak every hour, we have more and more uh, requests. 
Uh, next one, Miriam, please. Um, we're working closely with the Fire and Rescue Authority to purchase uh, the equipment that they need. Already 15 encrypted radios were uh, purchased uh, and so it's, uh, it's sent to Eshkol, Sderot, and Shara Negev. Another 115 security volunteer kits uh, were purchased and sent uh, with bulletproof vests, headlights, tactical clothes, and more. Um, lightings were provided the southern communities, guys, they're out of energy. They have no electricity for us. What looks to us, you know, so obvious, they need what, even to fight, they need uh, uh, lights and the uh, uh, and the lighting. 100 charges were sent to the soldiers for their iPhones. More, Miriam. Um, so we had a very, we spent the whole day at Alexander Mass High School with 160 C, uh, 60 students who helped us. We received from early in the morning and from last night, in fact, we received tons of packages of shampoos, of uh, soaps, chocolates, snakes, um, drinks, you name it, towels. And uh, this morning we arranged the entire synagogue of uh, Mass High School in Nado Sharon uh, uh, with tables. The students came, put some music and helped us packing 1300 packages for the soldiers and, uh, and the wounded uh, people. Uh, in the afternoon, when they finished, it was sent with the truck to Bersheva, to a center in Bersheva. 250 uh, packages will be uh, taken and given to soldiers of the IDF, and the rest will be given to the wounded people in the Soroka Hospital. Everything will be handled by our affiliate, Macom volunteers in the south, and they will deliver the, the packages. So these are some pictures. Russell was with us for the last two days. It was a great, I would say, he gave us confidence and support and help us, you know, thinking because we're all very nervous and very concerned with what's happening and with the constant news that they, you know, coming from the North and the South. Um, he left us there tonight back to, on his way to the States. That's why he's not on the call today. But these are some pictures from today, Miriam. These are the packages. I can tell you the entire entrance of the Mass High School, uh, school for those of you who were there, was jammed with all the, the, the bags. Every bag had a sticker on it, we are with you in Hebrew, Anachnu Itchem. And with the letter, the students uh, said, Miriam showed the next uh, slide and wrote uh, uh, notes to those you know, soldiers and uh, um, people in the hospitals that will get it, uh, you know, the warm you know, words for them supporting them from the Alexander Masse High School in Israel. It says at the end, Tisha'aru chazakim oavim otchem. Stay strong, we love you. Then, as if it was not enough for the Masse students, they said, you see, this is their command room uh, and started to raise money from their friends and their families. And every hour they came to us and said, we raised another thousand, another 1500. Um, I left there at 6.30, uh, ran home to take the call from here. They already raised $9,000, the mass high school alone. Uh, and then uh, they were called again into the, the, um, the shul over there and they were told that they, they will have to leave Israel soon, as soon as we can arrange for them uh, flights to go back to the States. It might take a few days, it might take a week or it might take 10 days, they were heartbroken. They were all crying. We heard them, you know, sobbing uh, all over. They couldn't believe that, you know, this is, uh, uh, this will be the end of their great uh, experience in Israel that they love so much. Uh, we also checked how much would be to take a charter flight uh, to the States when it's over $1 million. If anyone wants to support it, you're more than welcome. Otherwise we will be waiting until we have uh, or ordinary uh, flights going back to the States. Miriam. Um, one last day slide. We are working closely with the Louder Employment Centers, our Louder Employment Centers in the South and in the North. In the South, we are turning it into another uh, command center uh, uh, collecting uh, um, essentials for 
Israeli soldiers, including food collection, equipment, clothing. They can rest over there. The place is open. We have a um, person that will man the, the area and will uh, command the whole uh, operation over there. Um, food and, and stuff can be sent directly over there. And we also gave them a link to uh, everyone who sees it. It's in Hebrew and in English. It will be all over the media uh, to also donate money to JNF. A truck of mineral water from the Louder Center was sent to the army, believe it or not, but the army needs a lot of essentials that we would expect them to have, and we are there for them as well. Macom, our affiliate Macom educators are run, running activities for children that they, their parents, their fathers were called uh, to their reserve duty. We're also operating from the Louder Employment Center in the Upper Galilee. We have, you know, that we took over the entire basement, which is actually the shelter. Uh, we're also collecting over there with the food, with the Magalit Startup City uh, staff for the, for, for the Northern uh, Frontier and the soldiers. Uh, and Ammunition uh, Hill, of course, they uh, announced that they will uh, be open for a speed, uh, a rest, respite days. And so is the Green Horizon. We're well, not going to report about everything today. As it happens, we're collecting uh, uh, some more stuff. But this is on a nutshell, just to give you an idea uh, um, of what we've been doing and trying, you know, to arrange over here on the ground in Israel. We're concentrating all the information, all the data, all the needs, all the numbers, all the costs, everything, so that we have one organized list with everything that we have been asked to do and everything that we are doing. Holly, thank you so much, everybody. This is Rick Krosnick. I'm JNF's Chief Development Officer. Um, before we move on, um, Tali and Miriam showed a couple of slides of those beautiful kids from Alexander Musk High School in Israel volunteering. Ron Werner, who's the president of Alexander Muss High School in Israel is on this uh, Zoom call and he'd like to share a very brief update about some of the activities of AMHSI in Israel. Ron? Rick, thank you very much. Um, everyone, as you know, this is a very fluid, active situation. I'm gonna be quick and brief respecting that. Um, Alexander Muss High School in Israel is part of Jewish National Fund. We're not an affiliate. We're not a partner. We are part of JNF. Um, the situation where Tali is, is speaking to you from is actually the Werner boardroom on our campus. As you can see, our students are nothing shy of incredible. When we talk about building future leaders, what we really mean is they're leaders now. Our students are acting without fear. Their parents might be another story. Our students are acting without fear. They are strong. They are committed. They know the words, Am Yisrael Chai. They get it. They are helping. They are part of this. We informed our students um, a short while ago and their parents that we have made the executive decision. We need to bring them out of Israel and back to the States. They're crying. They don't want to leave. We tell everyone and we mean it. There is nothing more important than the safety and security of our kids. We are doing this for their safety. Um, as the war expands and is potentially two fronts, it gets much riskier. Also at the present time, 50% of our madrachim, our counselors have been called up for service. We don't have the support systems that we need to run the program they're supposed to have. We're also in touch with other partners and other programs. Most likely we will suspend our teaching operations in Israel until the end of the year. Um, we will, it's similar to what we went through with COVID. Um, we will rebook them and be double booked next year. Fortunately, we do have our new Must South Campus in Beersheba. We have more capacity. I cannot give you the exact answers when they're leaving. We are working on the flights. We're hoping we can figure something out. We literally have 10 people that have been working on this all day, and I'm messaging with them right now. We do have dorm rooms, and as part of JNF, our space will become available to those who are being displaced from OTEF Aza. They're leaders today. Our kids are great. Our kids are safe. Our entire team is working hard. As you know, every single person in Israel is affected by this. It is the same on our campus. Our teachers who are being personally affected, our madrachim, our staff, and what are they doing? 
first and foremost, they're looking after the safety and security of over 100 of our students in Israel. This is not the experience we wanted them to have, but it is the experience they're having. They will always be our leaders. I see questions on the side. We would love anyone that can help um, to offset the cost of flights because this is gonna be a huge financial burden on the school, um, can be done to JNF and directed to AMHSI um, emergency funds. And we thank everyone for the support. Um, I'll be available to continue providing any updates as needed. Rick, thanks for the moment. Thank you, Ron. And, and stay on to the end because we're gonna handle questions at the end. But as, as many that. of you know, um, on Saturday, we felt a very, very, very difficult loss among the thousands of of, of tragedies. Um, Ophir Lipstein, the, the mayor of the Sharonega Regional Council, was killed Saturday morning, rushing to a neighboring community to, um, to, to help and aid um, when the Hamas terrorists overran that community. Um, we're so grateful that that um, Maya Ifrah, who is the Director of International Relations for the Shar Hanega Regional Council is with us today. Um, Maya, our heart goes out to the entire community and um, please share some of your thoughts with us. Um, hello, Rick. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you for inviting me uh, as a representative of the uh, Shar Hanega Regional Council. Um, I met Rick just uh, not long ago and totally different circumstances. JNF are great supporters of Shara Negev. Uh, so I want to thank all of you for being here. Um, as Rick said, um, Mayor Ophir Lipstein um, was killed on Saturday morning. Uh, he is a resident of Kibbutz Kfar Aza, who is uh, very close to the border with Gaza. Um, he left his uh, family in the shelter and rushed out as he heard that terrorists were raiding the kibbutz and he was uh, shot down. But we have many more casualties, um, injured people. We have many people that are not accounted for. We are using all our resources right now as a council to understand the numbers and the people. The IDF is still working, fighting in some of these communities, uh, pulling out the injured people, finding the dead. So I don't have final numbers, but I know that they are much greater than we could have ever imagined. Ophir, if I could just say one word about the mayor, who was not only my boss, he was also a friend. And I know some of you know him personally. He was a visionary on Friday. Less than 12 hours before this happened, I spent about four hours with Ophir, with a delegation who came from Indianapolis, who were standing on a boulder looking at the um, border. And he was talking about his vision, about having connections with the people on the other side of the border, about the future of Shah and Negev, about prosperity, about our resilience. And just, I don't know, I don't know a lot of men like that. So this is a, bit, a great hit to the community, but um, we are a strong community. Shara Negev is a tight community. We are strong, we are resilient, and we will get through this. I know I see the people around me working day and night, nonstop. I see the people in the communities. Some are being evacuated and we're doing everything we can to evacuate as many people as we can, but some are staying in their communities. They're doing whatever they need. 
you know, there are cows that need, need to be milked. There are fields that need to be plowed. There are emergency teams who need to do their jobs. And all of us, the administration, the employees, the emergency response teams, we're all there. We're working for this community. Um, JNF USA is a great supporter of us. It has been for many years, especially in the uh, past few years, working tightly with Ophir and the council and myself. Um, and there is a future. There is a future for all of this. Um, and we're gonna come out stronger. I know it's hard to see it right now, but this is our home. And we don't leave our home even if it's hard. On Friday, we hosted 600 Christians in Charlemagne. You can see it on YouTube if you'd like. Phil was talking to the people and he said, we are occupying the border with Israel. We are the front line of Israel. And we're not going to abandon that front line. We are here to stay. So I want to thank everybody here. I know and we, I feel the support. I've been up for the last three days. I'm getting calls from people from all around the world that want to help. So I know that our future is bright. We are resilient. We've been talking about resilience. Rick knows this, Tali knows this. Yael Levantin knows this. Yoel is here. We are working on our resilience. We have spent, we've been spending so many resources in getting our people, our residents ready for times like this. And they have their personal resources to do it. So we know it's possible. You have any questions? Maya, thank you so much for taking some time to be with us. You have so many other things to worry about. Our hearts are breaking for you, but at the same time, I want you to feel the hug and for all the people of Israel and our friends and our family there to feel the hug of the nearly thousand people on this call and the hundreds of thousands of JNF supporters around the country. This is not something happening over there and we're just tourists watching on the news. This is our family. You are our people and we are with you. Um, thank you. This was a very hard thing to do and we're so grateful that you spent the time with us. Um, I don't know if we have yeah. Emmanuel not uh, shown on Rick, the line. Rick, Rick, Emmanuel is, is, has an emergency at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And Fine. instead, Mark Regev, Ambassador Mark Regev is with us on the line and he will give us the update. Right? Wonderful. Mark? Mark is an old friend. Mark, thank you so much for being with us. And please, anything you can share from the ministry. Mark, if you're on the line, go ahead and unmute yourself. So while we're trying to get Mark on the line, there are a few questions that have been forwarded to me. Um, and, and Tali, you can help answer some of them and my other colleagues. Um, and so there's a question about the hygiene products, Tali, that you mentioned. Yeah. Um, you know, so um, how, are, how are we doing that? How are we processing them? Who are we shipping the items to? And how are we getting the, the, the different materials to those who are displaced? Okay, so we were trying to figure out, you know, what will be the necessities that people need when they don't really get organized to pack what they need. And we thought about tooth toothpaste and brush and uh, shampoo and soap and towel 
and you know some some goodies so they have something next to them so we called one central place in uh, Jerusalem very nice guy who was shocked when he came this morning and last night uh, to to deliver all the tons of packages and saw all the kids but he was the one that gathered all the material and all the equipment from everywhere and bring, brought everything together to the Mass High School. And when, then when he stood there, you know, a simple guy from Malé Domim near Jerusalem stood over there and said, what is it? I've never seen such a thing. He saw all the kids singing and packing and took pictures of them. And he said, I'm a council member of Malé Domim. I'm gonna go back to show, you know, my people what, what you're doing over here. He was amazed. So that that's how we're doing it. We are, and we're trying to, of course, to get donations from some uh, companies and not to pay for every item. That, but, but we were trying to think, you know, smartly as to what what would be needed by by these people. There's uh, been a number of people working in the healthcare industry. Okay, Rick, Rick, Mark yeah. Regev, I think he's on the line. Okay, Mark, Ambassador Mark Regev, advisor to the Prime Minister. Are you on the line? Hello? Off. Good evening. First of all, I apologize. I'm a stand-in for uh, Emmanuel Nachshon, who was called into an important, urgent meeting. And this is happening a lot because Israel is in a, a crisis situation. Uh, I myself, uh, I'm in Tel Aviv at the Kiryah. The prime minister is in the room over there. And uh, there's a chance that if the siren goes off, uh, the prime minister himself will go down to uh, um, go down to the bomb shelter and I will of course too we have to lead by example I can't keep talking to you if the siren goes off in Tel Aviv they are the rules but I will speak briefly about what has happened uh, and uh, I have to tell you the prime minister said today and I'm sure you've heard it uh, this is a, a 9/11 moment for Israel a very difficult moment for Israel in fact if you think about it that there you know, there's over 300 million Americans and there's under 10 million Israelis. If you actually look at the, uh, from a proportional point of view, more Israelis have been killed than, than Americans were on 9-11. And, and as the Prime Minister said, this is, this is what we're going through now. It's not just another Israel-Gaza campaign. This is a not, 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 just, not just another round of fighting. This is, this is a major, this is a major uh, upgrade in the, in the conflict. And we're using the word war. Israel is at war. I was on uh, Friday at a friend's wedding. Uh, uh, the wedding of a, a man I went to, the daughter of a man I went to high school with, who I've known for close to half a century. And, uh, you know, it was a great day. You know, a very close friend's daughter gets married and you're there and you're smiling and it's a great event and you're with friends that you haven't seen for a while and it was it was in Jaffa by the port. You all know it, a beautiful place. And when I woke up Saturday morning, the last thing on my mind was that we're going to be in another Arab-Israel war. And I remember in my bed hearing, uh, it must have been the anti-aircraft missiles, uh, and, and thinking, is that thunder? What is that? And then... Uh, letting my wife sleep and going downstairs to turn on the uh, the news to see what what's going on and, and to be uh, dumbfounded, uh, missiles fired in their hundreds from Gaza into Israel. And at the time, we didn't know it. It came clear afterwards because there's what we call the fog of war. That while that was going on, they were breaking through the fence, coming into Israel, butchering our people, literally butchering our people. And uh, a terrible day, a horrific day uh, for Israel. And uh, obviously for the families who've lost loved ones. And uh, some people have, too many people have lost loved ones. But there's also a, a large group of people now hostage in Gaza. And we've all seen the terrible pictures. And you've got people from infants, children aged three and five, their mothers. And then you've got uh, and grandmothers, there's an 85-year-old woman who was, who was, who, who's in Gaza, a hostage. And if you remember, the, I'm sure a lot of you do the Gilad Shalat business, well, here we're going to have dozens 
dozens of people in Gaza in this situation. Some people say it might be more than 100. We don't have an exact number yet because, unfortunately, we're still identifying the dead bodies and we're still looking for people who are missing. Uh, but this is going to be very difficult. And I'm going to tell you the truth. Uh, it's going to get worse before it gets better. That's the bottom line. And it's, it's, gonna, it's not going to be like those rounds of fighting that we've had in the past where, you know, in a week or two, it's over. This could go on. This could go on. It took us just today, we managed to, you know, take over again all our own territory. I mean, you had a situation where 20 spots in Israel across the, the southern frontier, you had hostage situations and people, you know, being held by hostage, uh, hostage by, by uh, Hamas. You had situations where they were just driving down streets and shooting randomly at, at innocent people. And only today does that seem to have been brought under control and there's still a concern. There's still a concern that there could be maybe armed gunmen on our side of the border. So it's a, it's a very difficult situation. You can't sugarcoat this. It's a very difficult situation for Israel. And of course, at the, while this has all been happening, you're, you've had missiles across all of Israel. Uh, where I live in Modin, in Jerusalem, in the Tel Aviv area, and obviously in the south, the communities around the Gaza Strip, they've been hit hard. And the cities of the south, Ashkelon, Ashdod, Be'er Sheva, Ofakim, very, very difficult. It really is, as the Prime Minister said, a 9-11 moment. Uh, I'll tell you a story. My mother is 90 years old. And she has a friend who's 91 years old. They were in, in the Jewish youth, Zionist youth movement together back in the early 1950s. And he lives on Kibbutz Nirim, which is not far from the Gaza, Gaza frontier. Now, Kibbutz Nirim is a Hashomer Tzayir Kibbutz. It's the most left-wing part of the Kibbutz movement. There are not many Netanyahu voters on Kibbutz Nirim, believe me. They are what the BBC would call the Israeli peace camp, yes? These are people who, who would have been out there demonstrating you know, for a two-state solution, for a compromise. Uh, a, a lot of the activists from the Peace Now movement came from the Hashem Ertzia movement. But Hamas activists went into that kibbutz. They butchered people on the street. They took hostages and took them back to Gaza. They blew up houses. They murdered people. They murdered children. And that's maybe one thing we can learn positive from this, that our enemies, they don't care who we voted for. They don't care what we think about this or that issue. They want to kill us. It's not about politics. It's about the, the right of the Jews to live here at all in our own country. And that is the bottom line. That is the bottom line. And maybe there's a lesson here for Israelis. And maybe there's a lesson here for diaspora Jewish communities as well. That we have to understand that those who seek to hurt, those who seek to see the destruction of the Jewish state, really don't care about the political divisions between us. And we should be strong and we should be united. And I'm pleased to tell you that though Israel has been going through over the last three months a very, very difficult and polarized political situation, I'm not taking sides, I'm just saying that's the fact. It's been very, very polarized. I think there's been a wake-up call through this terrible, terrible tragedy, through this crisis. And there's now talk, I hope it happens, of maybe some sort of national unity government for the emergency to bring in some of the people who've been critical of the prime minister and to show the Israeli people that we as a country when faced with this sort of uh, existential threat, these terrible terrorist threats, that we will be unified and we will fight back and we will win. And we have to win because if Hamas wins, there is no future. People have made a comparison with the 1973 Yom Kippur War, which, which was exactly 50 years and one day before this attack. 
because there was a surprise by our enemies. They, 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 they succeeded in having the initiative and, 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 and catching us unaware. And there was criticism then as there was on Saturday and Sunday that the, the IDF wasn't in the right position in the right forces to, to, to push them back straight away. And, and, and yet in Yom Kippur 50 years ago, with a price, with many young Israeli men dying in, this, in, in, the, in combat, but we nevertheless overcame. And when the Yom Kippur War finished, we had Israeli soldiers quite close to Cairo and even closer to Damascus. We turned the table. We came out victorious. Our enemies understood that in the conflict, Israel had prevailed and Israel had won. It has to end the same way now. We cannot have a situation where Israel does not prevail militarily. And the Prime Minister has expressed goals. And the goals are clear. And they are as follows. We come out of this situation with a new, with a new reality in Gaza. And that reality in Gaza means that Hamas has neither the capability or the desire to strike at Israel again. They won't have the capability because the IDF will destroy their military machine. And they won't have the desire to hit Israel because they will understand by the price that they will pay in the next few weeks and maybe months, they will understand that it is not in their interest to strike again against Israel. That's the goal. We will be uh, 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 committed and we will be staunch and we will be unified in making sure that Hamas comes out of this once again with a military machine that's destroyed without the capability to hit us again and with a desire to avoid another round of fighting with Israel, to, to be in a situation where they understand that hitting Israel hurts them much more than it hurts us. Now, it's not going to be easy. I mean, we spent the last couple of days playing defense, just dealing with the terrorists who are on our side of the border. That is now under control. And now we're going to play offense. We're going to go into Gaza and we're going to target Hamas. And we're going to act to destroy its military machine and its political machine and its fundraising ability. Now, I tell you as, 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 uh, as friend, Jews and lovers of Zion from across the world. At the moment, we have a lot of support. We have a lot of support internationally. We've got a lot of support in the United States because Israel has faced a brutal terrorist attack. And the pictures are, are, are so horrific. Even Israel's not natural supporters are supporting us. But as we now move from defense to offense, as we move now to hit back at Hamas, we know how the story will be. You'll have the United Nations, and they'll say Israel is using too much force, that Israel is, is, is somehow hurting the people, innocent civilian population of Gaza. We know what the story is. And I ask each and every one of you, each and every one of you, I ask, what would your country do if it was attacked in a way that Israel was attacked on Saturday morning? How would you act? How would you expect your government to behave? And now when the whole world is hugging Israel, it's easier. But as we move into the offensive to degrade Hamas's capabilities, to hit them hard, to make them pay a price for their terrible aggression, to their terrorist behavior, that's when the real friends of Israel count. And that's all you, that's you lot. You are friends of Israel, and friends of Israel stand up with Israel when it gets tough. The one thing that we have going for us at the moment is the terrible pictures of what Hamas has done. They're all over the social media, and they've proven to the entire world who we are dealing with. Hamas is a brutal, unreformed, extreme terrorist organization. No one can make excuses for them. They are like ISIS. They're like the Taliban. 
they are like uh, uh, Al Qaeda. They are uh, the enemies of everyone who wants to see peace in the Middle East. They are enemies of everyone who believes in freedom, of uh, democracy. They are the most extreme killers that there are. And when Israel fights these people, when Israel defeats these people, we're not only protecting our own people, but I think we're fighting a global battle that is good for the planet, that is good for all humanity. I thank you all very much. Mark, thank you so much. And we know you have more important things to do than to be with us. So we are incredibly grateful for the time that you gave us. And, um, and, and so our strength to you and to um, the people of Israel for the days ahead. And uh, this group, this team, this family is certainly with you and everything that is going to be taking place over the coming days and weeks. So thank you so much, Mark. Um, everybody, I'm just being cognizant of the time. Just real quickly, there was one question that was asked a number of times. Tali, if you could unmute. Um, a number of people working in the healthcare industry have reached out. Is there a need for, uh, uh, for medical professionals from the states to come to Israel? If so, how would they do that? Is there anything you can share? Uh, I'm sure there's a need because a lot of, I know already that a lot of the doctors and nurses were uh, uh, asked, were, were called to the army, to the reserve duty. Uh, I don't know how to do that, but I promise that for tomorrow night's uh, Zoom call night in Israel, I'm going to get an answer even before that. I'm going to find out how they can volunteer, if they can come, you know, there's also a problem with the flights to Israel and from Israel. Uh, but I'm sure, I'm sure, and I know for sure that there's a need for doctors and nurses. I'll check it. Thank you. A number of you have asked if you can specifically designate your gift to one JNF affiliate or another for the emergency campaign. We ask that you give to the general emergency campaign. Things are so fluid during this time. Things are happening so rapidly. It, would, it, is, it is important for us that we've got the capability to deploy dollars where they are needed, when they are needed. And I assure you that if you give to the general emergency fund, our Israel operations team are going to deploy those dollars to the areas where they are needed most. And, and I will share with you the generosity of this amazing Jewish National Fund family in just the last 24 hours, already about $2.5 million has been donated to our Israel emergency campaign, or as we call it, our resilience campaign, because that's what we are. We are resilient. Um, we are going to be having a daily briefing at this time with the same Zoom number every day going forward, not on Shabbat, of course. And you will receive updates in the morning. Our team is working overnight, putting together um, the agenda, identifying appropriate speakers. So this will be the pattern we're going to follow over the coming days. Um, but plan on using that same Zoom number at this time, 12 noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. And in the morning, we will, we will send out to everybody through your regional uh, JNF staff the agenda for the day. Um, I want to thank everybody again for joining us, for your commitment, for your passion, um, and uh, we will see you tomorrow. Oh, the one last thing. People have asked about um, getting the slides or Mark Regev's uh, briefing. In about two hours, we are going to be publicizing uh, this video. Our, our marketing team will be putting um, out online, um, and there'll be an e-blast and on social media um, a recap of this with with this uh, with the recording of this uh, particular uh, briefing, and that'll be our pattern every day. We'll do it live, and then we'll send out the recording afterwards. So, uh, so stay tuned and, for that, and you'll have everything that you need in the recording. Thank you all very much. Rick, yeah. people are asking uh, to repeat the um, the link to the donations. So, because it was broken for some reason, can you please repeat it? Yeah. So it's it's uh, it's jnf.org slash support Israel, jnf.org slash support Israel. But if you just go to the JNF homepage, if you just go to jnf.org, 
the first thing you're going to see is the emergency campaign. Just click on that and it'll take you where you need to go. Just go to jnf.org and it'll take you exactly where you need to go. Thank you all so much. Have a good day.